Hello and welcome. I am Kapil Vaswani and I work with the Programming Languages and Tools Group at Microsoft Research India. And today I'll talk to you about uh, some of the research we are doing in, distribu in the distributed system space. So let me first give you a little bit of context into some of our work. Um, the kind of systems we are interested in are truly large-scale distributed systems like, um, sy like the cloud, uh, the, Amazons, um, the Amazon's EC2, uh, Microsoft's Azure, Google App Engine and so on. Um, these are systems that are truly distributed. They, they provide a large number of uh, machines. Um, they, have a, they provide you with a large number of databases and a very fast interconnect. Um, and anyone who has access to the internet has access to any number of machines that they want. Um, and they allow you to build really large-scale applications that service potentially millions of users. But being uh, fundamentally the cloud is a distributed system, so it's, it has all the pitfalls that come with a distributed system. So it suffers from process failures, uh, machines in the cloud can go down at any point in time, uh, especially because they are built from commodity, uh, commodity hardware. Uh, you can have network outages, uh, machines are not completely isolated from each other, um, you are open to security attacks and, and, and so on. Uh, so f so f the cloud really exposes uh, a programmer to all the challenges of building a truly distributed system. Our research uh, essentially is, is uh, structured into two, two parts. Um, some of our work focuses on core distributed systems where we are uh, thinking about uh, storage systems of the future and asking questions like how do you build redundancy and fault tolerance at really large scale. Uh, the second part of our research is focused on building the next generation of programming languages. Uh, these are specifically languages that support distributed systems from the ground up. Unlike conventional languages which are designed for a single box and really have no explicit support for distributed systems. And the other kind of problems we are also interested in are, are, are tools that help you migrate your existing applications uh, to the cloud. So what are the fundamental challenges with storage systems? So conventionally, um, if you think about storage, um, the picture that comes to your mind is that of a, of a, of a conventional database, which is centralized, uh, monolithic, and gives you consistent access to your data. It, it's a single, single powerful box uh, where you store all your state and, and access it in a way that's completely consistent. And if you want more performance, then you just buy a bigger machine. Well, the problem with this conventional approach uh, with conventional databases is they are not really highly available. A uh, database server can go down and once your database server is down you can't access that data anymore. Um, but cloud applications on the other hand, um, the Facebooks and the Ebays demand very high availability. Um, every time a user exp connects to, the, to, to an application they expect response. So you, uh, cloud applications must be designed to be both highly available and fault tolerant which means that the storage systems um, cannot be single centralized monolithic databases. The storage systems must themselves be distributed. Uh, and and may, they must be designed to be highly available. So these are sort of conflicting goals. And one of the questions we are asking is, how do you bridge the divide? How do you design the next generation of storage systems that give you the feel, the look and feel of a single uh, powerful machine, but at the same time at the back end are truly distributed? So, for example, we are designing the next generation of uh, data structures like sets, key value tables, and graphs that are both consistent, fault tolerant, and highly available at the same time. So, the second set of uh, problems we are looking at are around the challenges of building really large scale applications on, for, for distributed systems. Uh, so, let me give you an example of the kind of challenges that programmers routinely face. So, one of the expectations when you build a large scale distributed application is to make the application idempotent. Let me give you an example of what that means. So let's say you are building a banking service that supports, that lets, uh, lets your end users transfer money from one account to the other. Now, one of the problems of hosting this application on the cloud is that the machines that are, that are running this transfer after a client request is received might just fail. So the client may not even get a response for a large period of time. And typically the way a client of the system will deal with this problem is, is by retrying the request. So you, you send the transfer request again. Now the system might receive multiple such requests, but it still has to guarantee that it appears as if uh, the requests are processed exactly once. So that's what is called idempotence. So you want to guarantee that even though you receive the same request multiple times, it still appears as if the request was processed once so you don't get into situations where the transfer, the money has been transferred from your account multiple times. 
idempotence is a very key property, but unfortunately none of the systems uh, support idempotence by default. It's not something that's built in. As a programmer, you have to design your system to be idempotent. And that whole process is very manual, it's uh, time consuming and very tedious. So one of the questions we are asking is, can you design languages that support properties like idempotence from the ground up? So think of a, a, a clause in your programming language like idempotent that you can wrap around any piece of code and then that, code piece of, that piece of code just becomes idempotent by default. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a flavor for the kind of problems we are thinking about. Uh, there are some references to some of the papers uh, in, in the space on our web, available on our website and there are some, uh, here are some other references that, you can, uh, that tell you more about the challenges that people face when building cloud applications. And you can also refer to our web page for more details on any of these projects. Uh, thanks a lot for listening.